what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio. FanDuel on Christmas Day, a tradition unlike any other. Tom, let's break it down and let's play some NBA DFS, man. Yeah, it's one of my favorite slates of the year up there with, uh, you know, opening day of baseball, Thanksgiving, football. It's going to be a good one. Absolutely. So let's get right into it. Let's start with some of your top studs on the slate. And we begin in Houston with James Harden. Playing Warriors team, this is not what the NBA imagined on Christmas Day. But us DFS players, we'll take it. Yeah, not certainly the same Warriors team we've seen in the past few years. And, you know, we look at the slate overall and we have Atentacupo and Harden up at the top. Who do you want to go to? It's certainly a tougher matchup for Atentacupo going up against the 76ers in what could be a slower pace game. And also, I'm looking for the most potential upside. We have the, the Rockets coming in as nine and a half point road favorites, but we just look at Harden and we see that, you know, 1.43 fan points per minute, a usage rate sit, sitting at 31%. Right now, the Warriors really not good on defense overall, overall allowing 44.5 fan points per game to shooting guards. I expect Harden to blow past that. And we want the most upside. And there aren't many players that can consistently score above 70 fan points. And if Atentacumpo is in a bit of a harder matchup, why aren't we leaning to Harden in a significantly easier matchup in what should be a faster paced game overall and just more conducive for fantasy points? It's going to be fast paced and fun. James Harden and the Rockets, you know they shoot the most threes per game. You know they make the most threes per game. They're in a good spot here against Golden State. And listen, when they get up to their big lead, it's going to be because of James Harden. He's in a good spot and worth paying up for on Christmas Day on FanDuel. But if you don't want to go with James Harden or you want to go with a stars and scrubs approach, there's certainly other things that you can do. There's other stars that you can get in there. One like Anthony Davis and what's the game of the day between the Lakers and the Clippers? Yeah, this game is certainly looking to be probably one of the best on the slate. You know, we have two very competitive teams, uh, two playoff bound teams, and most importantly, it's a two point spread. Uh, we should see closer spreads across the board, but we're looking at Davis, who should be playing, you know, 35 plus minutes, reaching towards that double double. Uh, we know that the Clippers are generally pretty solid on defense. Uh, you know, power forward is kind of middle of the road for them. Right now, they're allowing, you know, 43.9 Fanduel points per game to power forwards. The league average is at 44.3, so it's really not too tough for Davis. And we look at the Lakers overall. It's LeBron and then AD when it comes to their usage, both sitting at 30 and 26 percent. Davis is averaging 1.30 Fanduel points per minute. And if this game is going to be staying close, we know that all the shots are not going to be going to, you know, KCP or Danny Green too much. It's going to be in LeBron's hands. It's going to be in Anthony Davis' hands. So that's what we want in our lineups. Anthony Davis, when he's out there, one of the best players in the NBA. Lakers have been struggling as of late. AD has it against the Clippers in a matchup that everybody's going to be watching. AD deserves to be in your lineup. One more story that is at least worth mentioning here is Nikola Jokic. The Nuggets, they've been better as of late, but they played a lot of games in a short amount of time, playing on Monday night, and now here back again on Wednesday. What do you think about Nikola Jokic? First of all, I think his price is really solid at 9.4. We're not reaching too, too much if you're really trying to get in, you know, Harden and Davis into those lineups. It's a massive pace-up spot for Denver. They're 27th right now in the league when it comes to pace. The Pelicans are 4th. Extra possessions on the ball is always fantastic. And we've seen, you know, Jokic have a bit of an up and down season to start, but he's really turned things up as of late. 40 more Fanduel points in eight of his last nine. Uh, he's a phenomenal passer, so we see him, you know, push towards a triple double in a lot of these games. We also have a solid matchup going up against the Pelicans, allowing 51.7 Fanduel points per game to center. So we have a modest price tag. I'm going to say at 9.4 for a player who is reaching towards a triple-double, a pace of spot, a weak defensive matchup. It's basically everything you could possibly want for a high-end center. He is a high-end center, and he's certainly worth putting in there because he's a walking triple-double, like you said. Someone that always has the ability to put up numbers across the board. Can't say that about everybody. Nikola Jokic in a good spot on Christmas. But to get all these stars out there, you will need some value plays as well. So let's go with some of these under-the-radar guys, some of these cheaper players. And that brings us to Toronto with Rondé Hollis Jefferson. The Raptors are one of the most beat-up teams in the NBA. They're playing on Christmas, and let's get some value out of them. Yeah, the early game against Boston, you know, shouldn't be one of the higher-scoring games. It's also going to be one of the lower pace games. And I know a lot of people don't like to target players in the earlier games. They think it's going to be a lower total. Uh, but Hollis Jefferson, like you said, the Raptors are just so banged up right now. He's going to be playing a ton of minutes. He's 4.1K tonight. Uh, we look at his production when we adjust for Gasol, uh, Pascal Siakam, and Norman Powell off the court this season. 
he's still producing 1.06 Fanduel points per minute, which is really, really solid. Uh, we look back at his game log. Obviously, he was a bench, a clear, clear bench player up until the last few days. We're going to see him out there playing 20, 25 plus minutes at over one Fanduel point per minute. It is a solid, solid value. Even though the game environment overall isn't going to be amazing, you need a player like this can at least be productive and reach value in your lineups. It's not exactly going to be a fast-paced game. It's not going to be a, a high-scoring game, potentially. But Ron Hollis jefferson at a permanent basis could be a good start. The minutes hopefully will be there. He doesn't cost really all that much, so it doesn't take a lot for him to reach value. We think RHJ can get the job done on Christmas. Another value that is worth playing here, Tom, that, that you believe anyway is worth playing, is Gary Harris of the Nuggets. Gary uh, has looked better as of late for the Nuggets. He's an old favorite of ours. Why do you like Gary Harris on Christmas? Yeah, like you said, he, he's been turning up as of late. He's reliant on pure scoring for the most part in order to reach or exceed value. Doesn't necessarily fill in a whole lot when it comes to rebounds and assists. Uh, we actually look at their starting lineup with uh, Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, uh, Paul Millsap, and Will Barton. He actually sits last among those five with a 15% usage rate, 0.64 FanDuel points per minute. And that's nothing you want in your cash game lineup. That's nothing to get truly excited about. But circumstantially for this matchup, it's a massive pace up spot, like I said, with Jokic. He's shooting the ball as of, you know, better as of late, taking you know four or more three-pointers a game. And the Pelicans right now are allowing 41.2 FanDuel points per game to shooting guards. So we take the pace up spot. We take a player that could truly be lower owned, even for a five game slate, who has the ability to hit threes and he can exceed value as he's been doing recently. On the five game slate, Gary Harris makes the perfect value player to get in there. And you have to like, as you said, trending, we both said, trending up here as of late. Uh, probably won't be very well owned, especially in the tournaments, which makes Gary Harris a fine play here on Christmas. One last player to get to here, Tom, and that brings us. To Lou Williams, not exactly uh, the value play. That's one of these guys that's like three thousand dollars or thirty five hundred rather, but somebody that is a little bit sneaky and under the radar. Why do you like Lou Williams? Yeah, Lou Williams, I think, is a little bit too cheap. We know he hasn't, you know, had the best season. His new, I'm going to say, somewhat of a new role. He's still coming off the bench, uh, but really, uh, the Clippers team is made up completely different this year than it was in years past. Uh, Five point one, you know, K for him tonight. A player that we've seen above 7,000 at large times this year, last year. He took 20 shots in his most recent game, but we have to, you know, consider the fact that Kawhi wasn't in that game. Lou Williams is actually the starter. But then if we look back even further at his game flow logs, we know he comes off the bench, as I said, and he's playing when Kawhi and Paul George aren't on the court. So he's taking 15, 13, 14, 17-ish field goals a game off the bench, not competing for usage, and he's going to be in a two-point spread game which should be very fast paced, very competitive. So 5.1K for a player who is known as a, you know, a bit of an old school microwave player, comes in off the bench, gets hot, gets the scoring going quickly. He can drop 30 real points in a very exciting Christmas Day game against the Lakers. Lou Williams, unheralded throughout his career, one of the most underrated players in the NBA. He's undervalued right now on FanDuel, which makes him well worth putting in your lineup here on Christmas. That's going to do it for us here on The Hurry. For Tom Vecchio, I am Greg Sussman. Enjoy the games, have some fun. And, you know, hang out with your family a little bit when all this NBA is going on. Should be a great day at basketball, so hopefully you can win some money. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.